it comes to youth entrepreneurship, what comes to your mind? What is Shanghai spirit? What are the best opportunities, possibilities for youth from different countries to engage, to build cross-cultural bridges, to collaborate on entrepreneurship and innovation? What platforms, models, tools that are available to help gain global understanding and practical skills such as negotiation in international arenas? This is Ying Ying Li, your co-host at How China Works. Welcome back. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization (SEO) is a permanent intergovernmental international organization created in 2001. At SEO Summit in June 2018, the heads of the SEO member states issued a message to the youth, calling attention to the younger generation to actively improve education and promote tolerance and cooperation. Scholar is a platform aimed at bringing together young leaders from 18 Shanghai Cooperation Organization countries to strengthen the connectivity. Promote dialogues and contribute to the regional development, and we are very pleased to have our guest today, Alim Alimov, who is a co-founder of Scholar, an entrepreneur and strategist with rich cross-cultural experiences. He does not only have a strong mission in leading youth to connect and succeed, but actually have the plans to carry out. Please enjoy the show, and we want to hear your feedback. Welcome, Alin. Thanks for being here at How China Works. So, our first question for you is: We really want to know your cross-cultural background. Can you use like thirty seconds or one minute to share with us? Before I do, I'd like to thank you,、uh, Yingying, for inviting me to your renowned now podcast.、Uh, I'm a listener. I'm a fan, and I think you're doing a great job to. Explain and to take people through the、uh, journey of understanding how China works, and not only how China works, but why China works. And I think we can all relate、uh, to this journey,、uh, especially those people who have been living here、uh, in China for quite some time. Now I've been here, give or take, for about twelve years,、um, and my journey to China uh, is. Uh, Uh, somewhat、uh, interesting to at least people who are asking me these questions, because originally I was born in Tajikistan,、uh, grew up in uh, Russia, uh, in uh, the U.S.,、uh, and then went back to Tajikistan, and then、uh, my journey brought me here to China. So, if this was thirty seconds, I'm I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you. So. I, as I just introduced, scholar. It is quite interesting and special community. It's like your brainchild. You told me before, right? So, what is this community like, and what is its what is your expectation for it? Well,、um, to answer this question, I guess I have to、uh, go back to my passions, and my passion was always、uh, building lasting relationships. Uh, with like-minded people,、uh, since I remember I was a child,、uh, we always had、uh, friends who have gathered together and discussed uh, uh, different things that we wanted to do, different projects that we wanted to start.、Uh, and when、uh, I was growing up, growing up in the in the U.S.,、uh, we had.、Uh, um, Uh, different events that we、um, shared together, and、um, what uh, really uh, connected all of us is an understanding and the vision for the future that we wanted to be together for the rest of our lives. And I'm so glad that uh, today, uh, my friends from my childhood, my friends from my university years,、uh, we're still very close to each other. And uh, uh, a couple of months ago, when I celebrated my birthday,、uh, many of them came uh, to uh, a completely new country for, for them, 
um, we met basically in the middle of the uh, of the world in order to uh, not only celebrate my birthday but to celebrate a friendship. Where so was that? It was in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, um, which uh, uh, I've grown to love. And then we basically, uh, just like uh, our um, ancestors that uh, were traveling through the Silk Road, we traveled from Uzbekistan to Samarkand, and then we traveled to my home country in Tajikistan. Um, probably uh, it was uh, more than uh, 600 kilometers that we've traveled together and we realized that uh, it was so important to uh, not only reconnect but throughout the years to always stay in touch and grow together. So this passion of mine when it comes to my friends, when it comes to people, when it comes to connecting connecting uh, the people who are like-minded, I call them the mirror of thyself. Uh, because when you look at a mirror, it's the 180 degrees of yourself, meaning it's not really you, but, but in reality, it's basically you. So when I, when I look at my friends, when I look at people that I work with, for me, it's very much important that we share the same values. We share the same principles. Uh, we have similar vision. Uh, we uh, have an understanding of the, of the, of the world uh, that is uh, uh, very similar to one another. Uh, and uh, I, would, I always wanted to bring these types of people together. Um, and just fortunately that uh, we're, we're all young. Fortunately, we have the time and we have the opportunity through technology right now to stay together, to stay connected, and to really think about uh, chances of working together. So Scholar uh, was a, uh, a child uh, that uh, was born out of that vision, out of the vision of the young people uh, coming together uh, from different countries, and mostly we're focusing on the SEO countries, the 18 countries of the SEO that uh, today accumulate almost 45% of the globe's population um, and uh, one-fifth of those are under the age of 35. And if you think about it, it's, it's nearly 800 million people. And if it's 800, nearly, uh, 800 million people, uh, you understand that uh, the region that we're in, in the Eurasian region, that it has been connected by the historical and civilizational links. And one time I remember this girl from Afghanistan uh, that attended a couple of our events. She said that I've never felt so at home by being at a scholar event, by being together uh, with the youth of scholar and she said I'm, 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 I'm interested why and I think the answer is very simple it is because of these links it is because of those historic connections that had our people our countries our lands um, interlaced throughout millennia we've worked together we've traded together We've uh, interconnected together. We intermarried each other. If you look at the history of the Sichol Jalu, of, mm -hmm. of the Silk Road, that was basically the 2,000 years of engagement of Eurasia with one another. And when we're talking about the Belt and Road today, which is the continuation of those links, we're realizing that we're just going back to history. We're not rewriting history, but we're continuing what was left from our ancestors. So all of those people that we're trying to bring into Scholar are already, have already this historical memory of, through the ancestors, mm -hmm that work together, live together. That's why whenever a Tajik and a Chinese 
come together, there's always something to talk about. That's why when the Russian and an Indian come together, there's always something to talk about. Those links are very important to today's formation of modern Eurasia. And I think that scholar is a testament and an ode to history. And I think that having this background is very important, is very important to understanding how we want to move in the future direction. Mm -hmm. A community of shared vision, cultures, and even memories from the past make scholar a dream come true, or right now the platform you regard as a brainchild, at the child, your heart of work right now. Like what specifics that you could share with us when it comes to moving forward? Right. And when it comes to how this group of people, yeah, they are with interest, they are with talent, they are with great leadership coming together. What specific activities or uh, format of you know future projects you could create for them to make it really impactful? Well, Scholar Network, um, this particular platform that we're building can only be built by people with not only shared vision, but with uh, a very high work ethic. Uh, Scholar platform is truly project-based, and the people uh, that are involved um, with this movement uh, have to, and I say have to, as members, work together every day on their on their time on their time on their accord towards solving the issues of today especially the issues of the community now we have several programs and several projects that different groups from different countries work together uh, we're counting about eight right now we began with the discussion club uh, back uh, in 2017 where we invite experts, politicians, diplomats. Uh, we even go to uh, embassies and speak to ambassadors uh, in order to create the proximity between the young people and the decision makers, in order for the young people to understand how uh, the decision is being made, how the process um, is uh, uh, ongoing, right? And all of those questions that they ask themselves um, while writing papers or um, uh, solving issues as entrepreneurs, etc. So uh, Discussion Club was one of the first uh, projects that we've started, but we also have anchor projects, something that we believe can truly be scaled, and one of them is Model SEO. Model SEO uh, is uh, uh, something that uh, we really value and we're developing at this moment. We've already had three big conferences. Um, two of them was uh, uh, within uh, the SEO Secretariat, uh, right uh, before the gathering of the heads of state uh, of the SEO. Uh, last year it was in Tsingdao. This year, uh, it was in Bishkek, and uh, uh, another one we have uh, outside of the Secretariat last year, it was during the assembly of the SEO youth in uh, uh, Dungfang, Hainan. Now, the way we approach this uh, project is through an understanding that the SEO model is very, very powerful. If we implement the model of the SEO uh, in our way of life, I think as human beings, we, we can truly become so much better because the model in itself is centered uh, around consensus. consensus. It's consensus built through communication uh, with one another. It's countries communicating daily about the most pressing issues, regional issues 
global issues, local issues, something that truly forms society. It's only through listening to one another, hearing one another, paying attention to one another, understanding the particularities of cultures, particularities of societies, is you can really reach a goal of working together through the established mechanisms that the SEO right now is really following through with. And by doing this MSEO, model SEO, uh, some people uh, can relate to model UN. Mm -hmm. And model yeah, UN has been an established, established interactive game that so many different colleges um, what is the key differences between? Um, well, the key difference the key difference is uh, is that uh, um, the rules are different. Mm -hmm. The way the decision is being made. For example, if um, you have a model UN and uh, you mock uh, Security Council, uh, you have the five uh, permanent members of the Security Council uh, out of the fifteen that can uh, veto a bill, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that can veto a resolution. You don't have that in model S mm -hmm. SEO. You don't have that within the SEO uh, system because SEO is governed by the Shanghai spirit, mm -hmm. which is mu for mutual benefit, which is through consultation, which is for regard and respect for cultural diversity, mm -hmm. right? The This is not a poetic term, the Shanghai spirit. Mm -hmm. This is a legal term which the countries have to abide by when they are discussing the most pressing, the most important regional issues, right, and global issues. They always come from a position of goodwill. They always come from a position of respect for one another. And they always think of the big picture. So Sometimes it's so interesting that sometimes uh, the countries, uh, when the, they discuss the uh, declaration, the final uh, document of the heads of state, mm -hmm. the, 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 you know, from the summit of the heads of state, they argue from the position of not just one country, mm -hmm. but they look at the common interest. So they'll always look at the big picture. Will it help the region as a whole rather than just one country? And there are different types of examples that uh, we can see from the declaration that uh, was uh, uh, truly um, mirrored uh, uh, when it comes to the decision uh, of those countries. And I, and I might say, uh, and I'll, I'll, may I say, that uh, all of the countries, and these are eight permanent members mm -hmm. who make decisions on a final resolution mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, in, within the declaration, is that they truly think of the region as a whole. And they truly want the region to be interconnected. Mm -hmm. They want the region to be safe, stable. They want the economy to grow. That's why there's more and more um, documents that are being signed within the uh, SEO or either directly or related mm -hmm. to, the, to the economy and economic cooperation, economic integration, whether it has to do with a transport, uh, communication uh, uh, agreements, or it has to do with trade. Mm -hmm. The countries and the leaders understand that in order for the region to be together, SEO has to work. Mm -hmm. The organs of the SEO, and there mm -hmm. are more than 50 right now mm -hmm. overall, if you count the, um, the experts, if you count the um, different, uh, 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 different platforms that are being built under the ministries, right? Um, there are more than 50 right now. And if you count them all in, there's a lot of work that goes in to the establishment and the development uh, of the SEO as a permanent body mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, uh, of, of, so many, of so many countries. 
So I have many questions while you were explaining the meaning and the process of model SEO, but you know, for general audience, what we heard, what we feel SEO relatively younger, um, in, in younger international organization, right? Relatively, but uh, w- uh, the previous focus, if I may understood, if I may understand well, is to um, focus on the security. Anti-terrorism, right? Right now, it seems to me at least that it has more and more focus in economic development, trade, and、uh, moreover, like youth entrepreneurship.、Um, how are these transition right now being introduced and、uh, shared with more audience, especially the younger、um, SEO countries?、Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call it a transition. I would call it growth. SEO just celebrated its 18th anniversary.、Uh, you could uh, compare it uh, to uh, coming of age, right? It's it's an adult now,、um, where it makes a decision on how it wants to、uh, proceed, on how it wants to grow and develop.、Um, security uh, fight uh, uh, with the three evils: the extremism, separatism. Uh, and terrorism are still there, and they're still a priority. But going through so many、uh, difficulties when it concerned、uh, when when it concerned the region, you know, through through the eighteen、um, years、uh, of its existence,、uh, and having a relative stability、uh, on its borders, SEO realizes that now. It is important to drive uh, the uh, economic machine forward. If you imagine the SEO having the four wheels, the economic wheel was a little bit stagnating throughout the years. But now you can see that now it's full of energy and it's coming along、uh, quite well. And of course, national programs are very important. If you look at the national, program. national programs, if you look at national programs starting with. For example, Kazakhstan,、uh, Russia. You have the Eurasian Union. You have a uh, program uh, like the Belt and Road Initiative that is starting in China and being shared、uh, throughout the region. And you see the linkages between all of those programs. You mean the conferences and the summit and this kind of activities. S- uh, summit uh, uh, is is a tool. Uh, mm-hmm. For, bring people,、uh, for bringing people together, but all of these uh, strategies uh, ha- uh, have specific projects that are being undertaken、um, regionally、mm-hmm. uh, that is shared by、uh, all of these countries. And of course,、uh, having these programs that are being supported、uh, in the Eurasian region、um, can truly help the SEO. To bring its organs and its mechanisms up to date, in order to also support all of these、um, strategies,、uh, projects, and programs. So that's why I think that、um, 2019, the 2020, that you know that that is coming up, where Russia、mm-hmm. will、um, host the SEO summit, and they have already declared that. One of their important items on the agenda is the economy, because through economy you can really see、uh, development, that you can really see、uh, stability、uh, on the borders through job creation, through、uh, tourism, uh, through uh, uh, not only economic cooperation but through cultural engagement. That's something that we can see right now, reminiscent. Of the Silk Road, but of course on a such a bigger scale, and of course much faster than it used to be. We also envision the、uh, the high speed <laughs> railroads being around, building around the SEO. We're also seeing the transit routes、um, uh, through the SEO region. From China into Europe, for example,、uh, we see the、uh, flights increasing in the past ten、uh, years. 
uh, tenfold even, right, mm-hmm. uh, from China into the SEO countries. We see uh, if if we look at, for example, China uh, alone uh, has uh, more than 200 uh, million people that are traveling outside of China, but only a portion of that is uh, to the SEO countries. We see the potential uh, of the Chinese tourists coming and visiting Central Asian countries, Russia, India, Pakistan, uh, Iran, and other countries uh, in the next five years mm-hmm. that can that can double or mm-hmm. even quadruple. I mean, the space is there. And if that will happen, mm-hmm. I, we think that SEO can truly benefit from it, can truly grow mm-hmm. as a young institution as a young organization and i mean uh, think of it think of it in um, uh, perspective uh, that seo being only 18 years old is so much younger than asean for example asean just celebrated its 60th anniversary right look look at other regional organizations there's so, so much more established right so much uh, uh, more uh, experienced uh, that's why we believe as young people mm-hmm. that uh, it is also our job to contribute to the development of this young organization. We can truly relate to it uh, because uh, uh, if it's not you know, the young people who can truly take the flag and bring it forward. That's why we're very uh, lucky that uh, the official structure of the SEO, the uh, Youth Council, is really coming up with amazing projects like the SEO incubators. Incubators. Yes, in, with acceleration programs for uh, businesses, like the SEO Youth Card, uh, which uh, allows you to take your experiences into the uh, SEO countries uh, and having an application in your hand that could uh, that could have you be uh, met by another uh, young person and. Uh, tour the uh, the city uh, or even potentially a village you know um, give you a private tour through his or through the local through the eyes of the local right uh, I think that these types of programs these types of uh, projects uh, along with the MSEO that uh, scholar right now is uh, building and propagating right uh, could truly bring not only awareness but could truly uh, bring the uh, linkage that uh, all of us really crave for. Mm-hmm. You know, the more we know, the more opportunities that uh, we can get, I think the better our society will be, at least for the next generation. Mm. Thanks for all this insight. So, we are in China. So, <laughs> I'm curious to know how do Chinese students or young professional, young, young professional react to uh, SEO or scholar activities here, what kind of uh, support or any kind of barriers you see in carrying out this mission of SEO here in China when, when, it, goes, when it comes to connecting and uh, promoting this message into Chinese community? Well, the Chinese are very respect, receptive and uh, they're much more aware of the SEO than I think um, uh, their colleagues or counterparts uh, in other SEO countries. I think, um, especially living in here, of course, we have much more information of what goes on in China rather than in other countries. But if we uh, compare, I think that uh, China is really uh, doing a great job of uh, promoting SEO uh, not only uh, within uh, the Chinese societies, but primarily within the Chinese youth. Many of them know, but not many of them uh, know uh, what it's all about. Not many of them know what really goes on in the kitchen, let's say that. Many of them still think that the SEO secretariat is not in Beijing and not is actually is, <laughs> is, is, is in Shanghai. Shanghai, yes, but in actuality it, it is in Beijing. One of the things that we're always basically starting with is uh, telling them, okay, it, it, the headquarters are in Beijing, but who can blame them? The name of the organization is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Um, 
When it comes to the uh, the, the projects, I think uh, uh, what uh, uh, really drives the Chinese youth is curiosity. Chinese youth is very curious, is very driven, uh, especially when it comes to education. Uh, I think that the Chinese society as a whole was was and is uh, always uh, curious about uh, the outside world, about who their neighbors are, about how can they engage with them. And I think it is a long-standing tradition of China of being very hospitable, of uh, uh, being amazing hosts, of uh, really listening to uh, the issues that uh, other people, that the uh, people outside of China care about. They're very interested in cultures. They're very interesting in traditions. Uh, that's why everywhere the Chinese go, they want to have those experiences and really bring back home their experience and share with their friends. Chinese society is a, uh, on the one hand, very collective society, uh, especially when it comes to experience. They want to uh, they want to experience them not only individually but collectively, and when they go back to their homes, they want to share it with everyone. Hence, you have uh, the WeChat, you know, the the Weibo's, the groups um, that they create with their friends, and this uh, uh, curiosity for the world really drives the society. And I think that the best thing in education that you have is curiosity. You can't learn anything if you're not curious. And I think that's why, you know, only uh, within the span of 30 to 40 years, uh, the Chinese, uh, uh, not only the Chinese economy grew, but the Chinese society has really been transformed. Uh, or maybe they just went back to its um, true roots. Because uh, if you look at the uh, uh, first person that have traveled to the West, at least known to us uh, by the name of Zheng Tian, Mm -hmm. You know, who, yes, who uh, uh, carried the, uh, the carried the message of uh, peace and cooperation mm -hmm. uh, to the West and uh, um, brought back uh, many new things uh, to China and brought uh, amazing silk from China uh, that we have the Silk Road today. Mm -hmm. This is the this is the reason, and, you, and then you have person by the name of Zheng He, uh, Zheng He. Yes, who have traveled uh, on uh, big ships that mm -hmm. were 10 times bigger mm -hmm. uh, than that of a Columbus, who have traveled uh, as far as uh, uh, Africa and arguably as far as Latin America, uh, who truly uh, brought uh, the uh, message of peace and trade um, uh, to the countries that uh, they visited. And of course, this was all driven by curiosity. Mm -hmm. And uh, to really answer your question, uh, when it comes to the reception of the Chinese people, of the Chinese youth, it always been possible because curiosity is what drives the, mm -hmm. uh, the people uh, of the Middle Kingdom, the people of China. And uh, it's truly wonderful to be here in Beijing, to work here in Beijing, to understand and comprehend uh, that Beijing is uh, uh, basically the Silicon Valley of China, uh, with more than 70 unicorns uh, that has been uh, braddened, uh, buttered uh, in the past 10 years uh, here in China, uh, a place where you have uh, culture, tradition, politics, economy, all converge in uh, uh, one big pot, you know, and uh, truly, uh, you know, melt all of these beautiful things. So you and like it here a lot? I like here a lot because you can see the dynamicism here. You have the best universities in China, you know, and uh, I'm proud to, you know, to have attended one of them, Peking University. Mm -hmm. And I could see the, I could see the uh, dynamicism uh, throughout the 12 years. Um, that I've been involved in China. Uh, even though I left for two years, I've always craved to come back and start something here in China because the, uh, the desire to create in China 
uh, is uh, truly the factor that drives many entrepreneurs, many people who want to uh, experience uh, the new way of doing things. That's why they come to China. And I'm just one of them. And I'm just very lucky and humble to have the opportunity to be in the place where we are creating a community of like-minded people, mm -hmm. uh, of basically friends that establish their relationships, not only for a year or two, but with an idea that it will last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And we are very lucky to have you here and have Scholar to bring diversity in Beijing and many other places, regions in China. And we really want to see more possibilities and solutions and interesting activities happen in this community because that's the whole point of this generation's mission. I really want to see more activities, engagement from Scholar. And thank you so much for being with us. And thank you so much for inviting me. And I think that we're a very lucky generation because of the opportunities that we have um, today. Um, I think that uh, we uh, are a generation where uh, we can uh, really make things faster, make um, new opportunities come alive faster but at the same time we must realize mm -hmm. that um, we have to be cautious we have to sometimes take a step back and to understand what we're doing what is the why not just the what as you've specified in the beginning what is the why why are we doing this what is the ultimate goal? And I think the ultimate goal is to make this world better for the future generations. But in order to make this world better for the future generations, first and foremost, we have to make this world better for ourselves. And in order to do that, we must take a step back in this crazy, fast-moving you know, pace mm -hmm. of a world that we are living in right now. And I can't wait, you know, for the uh, 5G to come along, which will become faster. But let not forget about our, basically, uh, humanity. And to really think about each and every step that we take, that it will truly, potentially last a lifetime. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. That's the best way to summarize this, Joel. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. All right, that's our show this week. Don't forget to visit HowChinaWorksPodcast.com where we have a resources page set up with links to Olam and our previous show guests. There's also a contact form where you can reach out and ask us questions or offer us feedback. Thank you again for listening. On behalf of Ying Lee, I'm Brendan Davis, and we'll see you next week on How China Works.